focus of this video is hepatocell adenoma or liver cell adenoma. This is a benign condition of the liver, tiny to a small lump appearing in the liver, which tends to have a non-cancerous course for the great majority of patients. However, there are certain peculiarities that we need to explore. In this video, we will find out what it is, what are the risk factors of developing this, what are the risks from this condition, what are the types, what are the symptoms, how do we diagnose it, and what's the treatment. The liver cell adenoma, as shown in this, appear as small pale lumps in the liver. In this case, it is fairly large, but that is to demonstrate a point. In general, they are smaller than five centimeters. In their architecture, they are very similar to the background liver tissue, but without the intricate design of blood vessels and bile tubes. What sort of patients may develop this condition? It is specially associated with estrogen exposure. So women taking estrogen containing contraception are at increased risk of developing it and if they have one it may increase in size due to androgen use in men for building muscle mass or for medicinal use is also associated with it obesity and metabolic syndrome and finally genetic conditions such as glycogen storage disease or multiple polyposis syndrome all of these increase the risk of hepatocellular adenoma so why is this condition important it is important because a tiny proportion of it is associated with rupture and bleeding and if this bleeding is of a large enough lesion free into the cavity into the ab abdominal cavity then the risk of mortality can be up to 20 percent up to five percent of these small benign tumors are associated with malignancy so what are the different types types are based on the genetics as well as the appearance under a microscope so those associated with hnf alpha 1 mutation tend to occur in women. They account for 40 to 50 percent and the risk of malignancy is low. The inflammatory type, as the name suggests, has cells that are indicative of an infl inflammatory reaction and these two occur in women in roughly the same proportion. And finally, there is the version called the beta catenin activation. This is much more common in men and the risk of malignancy is much higher. These different types may appear in a signature form with an MRI scan using specific contrast material. What are the symptoms? In general, these tend to be found when a scan is performed for any other reason such as an ultrasound ct or an mri will pick up small spots in the liver that may turn out to be adenomas hence they do not cause any symptoms in general however if and when the complications arise, then the symptoms may be secondary due to the complications, which I will explain a little bit later. In terms of diagnosis, this is almost exclusively by performing scans, and the most helpful is an contrast MRI scan. The hepatocellular adenoma or HCA can also be diagnosed on the CT, contrast ultrasound, and it is rare for a biopsy to be required to differentiate it from three other conditions. One is an HCC, a a hepatocellular cancer or an FNH which is a benign condition or liver cancer or metastases from other places. In general, the scans are usually sufficient to make the diagnosis. In terms of treatment, there is a clear difference in terms of the gender. This condition arising in males is associated with a much higher risk of cancer forming. Surgical removal is to be preferred. In the females, in all, in all patients, the oral contraception or extraneous estrogen intake should be stopped. Patients should be encouraged to leave a to lead a healthy lifestyle and to lose weight if they are overweight. And then we come to the size of the lesion or size of the HCA. If it is less than five centimeter and any oral contraception has been stopped or extraneous contraception has been stopped, then these lesions can be observed which means forming an MRI scan at regular intervals and in the long term, a yearly scan should suffice. However, if the size of HCA is greater than 5 cm and it remains the same size and does not shrink, after estrogen intake is stopped, then these patients should be considered for surgical removal where possible. What about complications? And one of the complications I mentioned before is bleeding and the other is malignant change. In terms of bleeding, for most patients, if the tumor ruptures as shown over here in the cartoon and blood starts pouring out in the, into the abdominal cavity, the modern treatment entails inserting a catheter from the groin up into the small blood vessels, supplying the liver, and then blocking these to stop the blood loss. This is called transarterial embolization. Malignancy developing in, in an HCA is treated like hepatocellular cancer everywhere else. I have done specific videos on that. What if patient has an HCA that needs treatment, but the patient is unfit or declined surgery? Can we use other means? I have just described transarterial embolization as a means of reducing tumor and perhaps destroying the majority of it. And then there is ablation, 
where a probe is placed into the tumor and the area is treated with heat using microwave or other technology and thus destroying these tumors. This is called ablation. The tumor has to be less than five centimeters in size for this to be successful and ideally less than three centimeters. What about pregnancy? Although pregnancy is not contraindicated in women known to have HCAs, but these patients must be observed very closely by their obstetric team and the hepatology liver surgery team because the tumors or the benign lesions are subject to very, very high levels of estrogen. And in some cases, that may cause a sudden growth spurt, risking the complication of bleeding and malignant transformation. Finally, there are conditions where multiple HCAs may develop in the liver in both lobes of the liver simultaneously. This would require specialist input. The focus should be on the largest HCA and the size criteria I've described apply. The risk of complications and malignancy should be weighed up in general and the strategy of observation versus intervention should be individualized for each patient. Rarely, patients with a high risk of complications with adenomas in the liver which occupy both lobes and cannot be treated, liver transplantation may be an option. 